Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove, and in this video I'm going to give my tips and advice for anyone wondering how to prepare for an interview for the position of Network Engineer or Network Technician, either as a fresher looking for your first job or as an experienced engineer. I've been working in the telecoms industry for about 27 years, and I've not only attended many interviews as a candidate, but also participated in the interview process when hiring new engineers. I can't speak for all interviews everywhere and for all companies, but I can pass on my advice based on personal experience. Interviews in the IT industry often contain two parts. There is the technical part in which the employer determines if you have the necessary skills and experience for the role, or if you're a fresher looking for your first job, the required aptitude and attitude. And there is the other part in which the employer determines if you have the necessary communication skills and whether or not you're likely to fit in with the existing team. So as well as your impressive list of Cisco or other certifications, if any, the prospective employer will also want to know about you, your personality and your approach to work. So let's go through the process as if you have an interview lined up and you're preparing for it. A bit of planning and research will not only give you a little confidence, but it will also strengthen your chances of success. First, do a little company research. Visit their website, read their mission statement, and memorize some of their key products and services. Next, plan your journey and make sure you know exactly where to go and how to get there. This may seem obvious, but you don't want to arrive late and stressed because you didn't know where to park or you were unaware of road or rail delays en route. Then rehearse the journey. Go through it on Google Street Maps or, if you're not too far away, perhaps even drive or travel to the location before your interview date. Knowing exactly where to go and how to get there takes away some of the pre-interview stress. Before you arrive, make sure you know exactly who to ask for at reception, who will be present in the interview, as it could be two different people, and where in the building the interview is to be held. If you can obtain some or all of these details before the day, you might be able to do a little background research on the interviewer by checking the company website for a bio of that person, or perhaps on LinkedIn. Now we come to the interview itself. It's often said that people form a strong impression about someone in the first seven seconds of meeting them, so it's vital that you make a good first impression. This means you have to pay close attention to your clothing, personal grooming, posture and body language. Again, you will need to attend to all of this in the planning and preparation stage. It may seem old-fashioned, but I would suggest that an interview is not the time to show off your tattoos, body piercings or flamboyant dress sense. You need to be smart and presentable to a degree that suits the ethos of the company you're approaching. And you should be able to determine what this is in the research stage. If you're really not sure, then you could phone reception and just ask the receptionist for advice. Before you enter the building or while you're waiting in reception, do some deep abdominal breathing and consciously relax your muscles. If you have time and you arrived by car, you could do this in the car park. You could also do some vocal exercises just to get your vocal cords warmed up so that you don't do that nervous high-pitched squeak when you first start speaking. Greet your interviewer with a firm but brief handshake and look them in the eye with a warm smile. Act as if you're pleased to see them and your body language should match your thoughts. If it's a technical interview, you might be asked a series of questions that will be similar to the exam questions that you've experienced in your certification exam. So if you've obtained a CCNA, CCNP or CCIE, then you might be asked to provide answers to questions taken straight out of sample papers that the interviewer has found online. 
You might even recognize some of the questions if you search for and complete these same practice tests. It's a lot harder to answer these questions when one or more people are staring at you, so don't be surprised if you don't do as well as you do in the exams. There's no pass or fail here. It's simply a way of seeing how you react when you're faced with technical questions. You may be asked to explain your answers on a whiteboard with basic network diagrams. They may describe a network problem scenario and ask you, how would you begin to troubleshoot this? Don't forget to give the basics in your first answer, i.e. ping tests, trace routes, checking ARP tables, etc. They will want to see evidence of a methodical approach to troubleshooting that doesn't make any assumptions. The answer to the problem they've given you may be something really simple, like a mistake in the subnet mask or a disconnected cable. These open questions are also a chance for the employer to assess your verbal communication skills. If the role is customer facing, they'll want to know that you can both listen attentively and explain an answer in a straightforward way that conveys your understanding. If they ask a question to which you don't know the answer, don't just say, I have no idea, but do suggest how you might fill that gap in your knowledge. For example, you might admit that you don't know, but you would look that up on cisco.com and bookmark the answer. You'll probably be asked to describe what you know about the essential differences between TCP and UDP, or HTTP and HTTPS, or BGP and OSPF, etc., and specific technologies like firewalls, SD-WAN, network security, and so on. Technical questions are hard to predict, and there are thousands of them, so just trust in your own abilities, and remember that if you do get any wrong, it's not a failure. The non-technical part of the interview is when they ask you about yourself, your ambitions, and your hobbies. Give your answers confidently, but don't talk excessively and chatter about banalities. A few sentences are enough. They're looking for people who understand the importance of a good life-work balance, not workaholics who will burn out in the first two years. There will probably be a moment toward the end of the interview in which you might be asked, is there anything you would like to ask us? Don't be tempted to launch straight into questions like, yes, what's the pay and when will I get a pay rise? You can ask about pay, benefits, etc., but this is best left until the second round of interviews. The first interview is the chance for the employer to see if you're a match for the role and for you to see if the role and the company is a match for you. Ask what your working hours will be and if there's any requirement to work evenings or weekends. Ask if the company provides training and career progression. At the end of the interview, thank the interviewer for their time and tell them it's been a pleasure meeting them. In a few days, you'll probably receive a call, letter or email either asking you back for a second interview or telling you that they won't be taking the process any further. It can be very disappointing to be told it ends there, but try not to let it drag you down. Every dawn at the beginning of every day is full of new opportunities. I have failed exams, been turned down after interviews, and have been made redundant, so I empathize with those who experience disappointment. But persistence pays off. Those who are successful are not necessarily the ones who are the cleverest, luckiest, or even the best educated, but those who simply didn't give up trying. Good luck with your interview. Post a comment below if you have any questions. Please give this video a like and share it with others who may be interested in this subject. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the next video.